guys. It's Ann. How's everybody? Anyway, I'm doing a collaboration with our Dirty Half Dozen collaboration group that I'm part of. But since Danielle Gerstenberger is on vacation with her husband and her kids, her cousin, Debbie Knobloch, is taking her spot as our special guest. Now, yes, I look very much like I should actually be finished. And technically I was until just a few minutes ago because it just wasn't right. So, yeah, there, there's the other look in case you want to know. There it is. <laughs> At least the eye look. I'm not going to change the rest of this, but I am changing up the eye look a bit. Now, normally when I'm doing a picnic, I'm really hoping there's a swimming pool so I don't have to put any makeup on. It's a perfect excuse to put on no makeup because the last thing you want to do is crawl out of the pool and look like a raccoon. with your eye makeup all around your face and running down and big black circles under your eyes from the mascara and the yeah no not pretty so i'm going to do the kind of look i would normally do if i was positive there was no pool just because and the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use my cranes because you don't necessarily need a lid primer with the creams so that's one less layer to deal with now I've got my zero sweat on which is the face lotion or foot or hand or wherever you just perspire too much. And I've got that across my forehead and down the sides and along my nose and my upper lip to kind of keep those under control. See, one of the problems with having fibromyalgia is you, your body does not like to deal with extremes in temperature. So if it's really hot, you're going to sweat way more than most other people you know. If it's really cold, you're going to hurt. The heat can actually make you very ill while you're out in it if it's too hot for you to handle. The other problem is if you are having a bad pain day, you are going to have the heat sweats combined with the pain sweats and you're going to look like somebody's giving you a shower or at least i do i know a few other people with this issue who have the same problem because it'll just run down your face so yeah i put the lotion on there to try and keep my makeup from disappearing <laughs> now this is a 4th of July weekend, and we've got a big, long weekend. Yes, we do, because it hits on a Thursday, which means the majority of people who have your basic office and government calendar control business is going to be off for four days. Which means you now have four days to go out, run around, have a lovely time, take in fireworks if that's your if that's your bag, go do family stuff, run around with your kids, maybe go camping. You know, it's just a great time 
of the summer for some people with a four-day weekend because for some people the summer is not so bad let me tell you I used to live in the DC area you know Washington DC that place when it gets hot let me remind you Washington DC is not just a swamp in the news it was literally built on a filled-in swamp and since it has that atmosphere around there let me tell you it gets hot it gets muggy before the advent of air conditioners and the general application thereof the military serving in that area got tropical duty pay because it was so awful when I was a kid my dad finally got us an air conditioner when I was about 12 and I stopped being quite so sick all the time after it came in now we had this one huge window unit that cooled that whole little cracker box house that we had. Now my daddy was a bus driver and drove for what used to be A, B, and W and then became Metro when they started up all that combination and combining everything in Maryland and DC and Virginia with the bus lines and then put in the rail system and all that stuff he drove a bus for 42 years And because of all of the negotiations and stuff about combining all the bus lines and creating the metro system and my dad being a union officer for his local, my daddy little old country farm boy that came to the big city for a job had to testify before a congressional committee the man was scared to death but he did it they finally got everything worked out because they had some issues with one of the bus companies telling one side of the negotiations that they were going their lawyers were going to negotiate for the whole the whole thing and represent all of them all the bus companies in the negotiations and then they would get to the table and they would tell the people there that, oh no, they were not doing that. They were not doing that. They were not taking over negotiations for any of the other bus companies. So they're trying to merge bus companies in two states. and the district with people playing who's got the pocket rocket between them and nobody wanting to own up to what was going on so they called in the union officers from all of the locals and said 
tell us what is going on. So my dad got to sit there and, with his little pile of papers from the other bus company and go, look, this is what they're telling us. And then they come in here and tell you something completely different. So at this point, ain't nobody knows what's actually going on except them. And we don't like any of what's going on. So that got stopped. And that was a little farther afield in the D.C. area than I had intended to go. Oh, well. Story time is story time. Anyway, and then I moved to Florida. This was a bad idea. Moved to Florida because my daughter-in-law's father lives in Florida. And he was suggesting coming on down so that he could be around his grandchildren more often. And we're going, okay. Isn't it expensive down there? No worse than anywhere else. This was not correct. And we could barely afford to rent someplace. And the weather tried to do us all in. That was not pleasant. That was really not pleasant. The heat, if you want to know what it's like in Florida because of the humidity levels and the heat, take a really sopping wet towel and stick it in your dryer good 30 minutes. Get it nice and hot. Nice and hot. And then open the door and stick your face in the opening. I kid you not, you are going to feel like you need to cut off a chunk of air and chew on it for a while to be able to breathe. And with as hot and humid as it was in Florida, that was pretty much my, my condition most of the time. And we spent four years in this. It was not good for my fibro. It really wasn't. Plus, a lot of autoimmune issues are UV reactive. So, yeah, here I am in the sunshine state with a UV reactive condition. Not her best move. And yes, we went too because by that time, all of us, me, the hub, our son, his wife, their kids, we were all living together trying to make it easier on all of us to deal because both of the kids are on the autism spectrum and having extra hands around to help deal with the kids was handy. Plus, 
My hubs is a stroke survivor. I've got my medical issues. My daughter-in-law started developing her medical issues, which turned out is an autoimmune issue. And with all that going on, we figured it would be much easier and much more reliable on the kids if we were all living pretty much in the same place. No big deal. So off we went to Florida. And then when relationships didn't go exactly where we all thought things were going with people in the neighborhood and my daughter-in-law and her father, all that stuff. We ended up considering, because it was so expensive there, we ended up considering where my son had spent some time in years before all of us getting together and where he had a daughter from a prior relationship so we're going okay or if we do this i'm not moving again so here we go across country to Southeast Oregon. And that part wasn't so bad. I mean, we got here, found a five bedroom house, actually found the house online before we left, got our mortgage put together. Settlement was done by remote while we were traveling across country. We signed all the paperwork and everything before we left Florida. So then it was just, you know, all the lawyers did all the lawyer stuff. We got here and we had found this five bedroom house with a really nice yard right at the edge of town. And it was over $400 cheaper a month than the place we've been renting in Florida. So we're like, yeah. We were like all happy. We were all having a time. We thought this was pretty dang good. So here I am now, and thinking about, let's see, what's happening in town? I think we've got fireworks and a couple of local bands doing a concert and all kinds of stuff. The one thing I don't want to do, though, is go sweat. <laughs> or at least sweat all my makeup to the point where it's running down my face and doesn't stay put and looks really really nasty after doing all this work twice so that's my hot weather stories and dealing with hot weather. Now, let's remember something. This is our country's birthday. This is a actually pretty nifty holiday when you think about it. Because the founding fathers stood up on their hind legs and told England to let us be. 
We didn't want to be a colony anymore. We wanted to be our own people. Of course, King George was not thrilled. But they kind of anticipated that. But it was the first step to becoming an independent nation and no longer just a collection of colonies. Kind of a big idea. Very big idea. And this is the date they signed that declaration back in 1776. It made a lot of people, even in this country, kind of mad. Because some of the people in this country were not necessarily thrilled with the idea of breaking away from England. But we did it. There was a little bit of a uh, <clears throat> upheaval about it. We prevailed in the upheaval. We became the United States of America instead of the American colonies. We weren't very big yet. We've grown a lot. Our history has never been smooth. And sometimes the more we learn about our history, the more we really kind of look back at some of the things we did in the way we did them and go, yeah, not the best move, guys. But it's where we are. Currently, we're in another situation where our people are not necessarily speak, speaking kindly to each other all the time. Political upheaval. Lots and lots and lots of debate. Lots of yelling. Occasionally some of our legislators doing things like hiding. In case you're wondering about that one, check out the Oregon legislature. <laughs> it's intense. But we are one people. E pluribus unum, out of many, one. We've got people who've come here from all over the world. And we have managed to become Americans. It's an interesting concept because we've got cultures from all over the world. All of the ancestors who came in as immigrants and brought their traditions. And you can go anywhere in the Union and you'll find places where they're having cultural celebrations. I mean, the Swiss. And, and, and the Germans and the Irish and all of it. But we're still Americans. I'm really hoping, I'm really hoping 
this holiday reminds people that we're supposed to be united. I'm hoping that the people who are not so far out on the hard edges can get together in the middle and settle some stuff. It would be very pleasant to have that happen. I'm hoping. No, I'm not going to sing. Believe me, you don't want to hear me sing. But I hope you have a wonderful time this weekend. You've got four days for some people. Yeah, if you're on one of those governments, government calendar controlled jobs, you've got four days to play with. Go home. Hug your kids. Take your family out for a picnic. Go to the lake, go swimming. Go do something. But do it together. Unity. Be good.